Flippinier here, and I'm going to be doing a review on a knife, a very special knife. This right here is the Applicate Fairburn Combat Knife, and this was uh, manufactured by Boker and sold by Boker. Very, very beautifully built knife. But I got to give you a very quick uh, background. The, basically, the original first purpose-built knife for this was the Fairborn Sykes knife, and that was a very long stiletto style. It's a modified stiletto, a regular stiletto, has a very long, narrow blade, but it's not sharpened on the edges. A modified stiletto is a very long, sharp blade, but it's got sharp edges. Uh, that type of blade is perfect for stabbing, so you want to go ahead and work between the ribs, or go through the lower lower jaw and into the brain stem and turn somebody off. Now that's why they're long and narrow because they have to penetrate clothing and at times during World War II some of the clothing was rather thick and they based it on the Russian heavy coat which was really thick. They figured if you can go, you know, that right there is the thickest that they can ever go through. So if you can go through that it's set for everybody. So it was designed to go through that and hit vital organs on the inside. It had a long, narrow blade, and it had a handle that was a foil handle, as in a fencing foil, not a tin foil. And that's the way it was designed. Uh, it was a good knife, but it had two problems. Number one, the foil handle was round, so you could not tell the orientation of the blade at night, unless you put your thumb on it, like right here. Then you can go ahead and say, okay, that's, that's the blade orientation. But other than that, there was no way to tell which, you know, when the blade was up or down. And you have to know that because you can't try to go up or down, you know, up and down through the, the ribs. It won't make it through. It has to be sideways. And that's why you have to know the orientation of the blade. And the other problem was troops because this was a combat knife. And like I said, it was a combat knife, but it, even though it was issued to the SAS, British Commandos, OSS, Marine Raiders, Rangers, and they all had their, well, the, the U.S. had their version, the British had their version, and the British, uh, the British version was uh, slightly better steel in it, slightly better material, and the U.S. version was you know, lesser grade of steel. Uh, both of them had, you know, they were beautiful knives. If you take a look at that knife, it's a wonderful looking knife. It's a, a very, very beautiful weapon. Um, but what would happen is they'd use that, that knife because it's the only tool they had with them, and they'd use it to pry open boxes. And when you pry open a box like that, it snaps the tip off. If you snap the tip off of a, of a stiletto, that, that knife is basically worthless unless it's reground. Now, even though it's a modified stiletto, it's still, once you break the tip on it, it's not any good for, for thrusting, and that's what the, what the knife is for. So unless it's reground, it's not very good at its, at its task it was designed for. Then came along this one right here, the Applegate Fairburn Combat Knife, and this is a modified version of the original. What they changed is they changed the, the handle design, and this handle design is designed to know the orientation of it. It is easy to tell whether or not the blade is up and down or sideways. There's a very specific way of holding the knife. And on this one right here, this is a nylon handle. This is tough as nails, this one. Right here, you know, this is the, the, the latest version of it. And like I said, this is tough as nails. You can beat the crap out of that handle and it's not going to have any problems with it. Um, the blade steel is 440C and it's a stainless steel, so you're not going to have to worry too much about any kind of rusting. Uh, the hardness of it on a Rockwell scale, it comes in at 58. It is 11 inches long overall. It's a 6 inch blade. And let's see, 9.4 ounces. Um, and let's see here. It is bead blasted, even the brass, so it's not real shiny. You see it does have a little glint on it, but it's not too bad at all considering. I got some really high-end lights in here and you can't see that. Uh, the blade thickness is 3 sixteenths. So it's a, it's a hefty knife on, on this one. Now, this right here is the latest of the latest. Uh, when this one came out, it still had the breakage of the tip issue. It's a 
shorter knife than the original, uh, than, than the original, the, the, the Fairburn Sykes. But this right here was the improved version of that because, like I said, it has a better handle and it has a better blade design, actually. It's a, a more stable blade. It, it's, it's, it'll maintain an edge longer. It can be used as a utility knife as well as a combat and uh, close quarters. Now, it's kept on snapping the tips off and you just can't do anything about that. Uh, because, you know, that right there is the weak point of a knife. And any knife of that design is going to go ahead and snap off the tips. It's easy to do it. Even on uh, this one right here, it's a Tonto blade, but you notice on the Tontos they get really thick. But you can still snap off the very end. So, while uh, Applegate and Fairburn designed a beautiful knife, and this is a perfect combat knife. It, like I said, the the handle, inside the handle, it's got steel weights in it, and you can open up the handle and, you know, separate the handle and remove some of the steel weights if you wanted to. But this right here is designed to be perfectly balanced. You don't have to worry about it. it it's not handle heavy. It's not blade heavy. It is a perfectly balanced blade. And that's what you need for a fighting knife. It needs to be perfectly balanced. Uh, but along came a Canadian knife maker by the name of Brent Bashara who was actually a, a knife maker, as well as a uh, uh, Canadian Special Forces of, I, of some sort. I can't not remember right now. I think it was in the EOD and everything else. That he basically a real live operator, and one that basically knows everything you want to know about special operations. And he was making his own knives and making them for his buddies. And he made a special kind of knife blade, and he called it the Besh Wedge Design. And that's what he did to this. And he took this knife, the best combat knife, and made it the absolute best combat knife ever. And the reason, he, you know, the reason I say that is this is a tip that cannot be broken. Let me get closer so you can see this. Like I said, this is the Besh Design. It's basically, it looks like the same profile as the original, but it's got the Besh blade. And the Besh has a chisel grind on this side and a chisel grind on this side. And what that does, that gives you a very unique nose to it. It looks normal, but it's not. You see how thick that is? Well, this is a, it's got a cutting edge here, a cutting edge here, and a cutting edge here. It actually has a cutting edge straight up and down. So this right here can cut three different ways. So it's very, very, very effective and you're not going to break that tip. And that's been plaguing knives for the last you know, 65, 70 years. Just a purpose-built combat knife. And you are not going to mess up this knife. As you can see, it's got the Boker logo right there, that the tree and and the writing there, and just below that you see the the serial number 111 and in the back you also got some writing there and a little bit more detail on the handle as well as the detail on the signatures which are very well well done you can actually feel them it, it is really nicely done and since this is bead blasted it really has a nice finish to it it's extremely sharp. This is not the only Besh wedge I have. Uh, I've talked to Brent uh, a couple times, and he really put a lot of thought into these combat knives, as well as as well as you know, overall Besh wedge design. And I agree with everything that he's done with it. It is you know, who am I to agree with it? But it is my ideal combat knife and I base my ideal knife on on design um, I look at, at a knife or a weapon as a tool and a tool is designed to fulfill a need and typically a very narrow need this right here will penetrate just as the old one will but you don't have to worry about hitting bone and breaking the tip off it can penetrate everywhere you need it to and it can also still be used as a general 
service knife for opening crates and things, and troops are going to do it anyway. So this one here is made so it can handle it. It is easy to sharpen. You know, the chisel grind is an easy to sharpen knife, especially in the field. You only got one edge to, to worry about. So it is just basically the perfect knife. And like I said, this is a combat knife. This is not, uh, this particular one right here, I would not use this uh, for batoning or something like that. It is just too beautiful to be used in that fashion. This is a fighting knife. This is a combat knife, and it should be used as such. Use some other piece of crap knife for batoning. Uh, use, use anything else for batoning. Use this for combat. This is close quarters combat, just like this is used for close quarters. They both are, are a tool, and you should use a tool for what its intended purpose is. So I give this knife really super high marks. Uh, this is a wonderful knife. If you're looking for a good knife, I would highly recommend this knife. This is a Weapon Air recommended knife. It is an absolute wonderful knife. If you're looking for it, this is it. And these are, I don't know how many they make, but they are serial, serial numbered, and sometimes they make a lot of them, and sometimes they don't. But the Besh design, I don't know how many they, they make of this. Normally they don't do the Besh. Normally they just have a regular point on them that breaks off, but you get the idea. If you have any comments or questions, leave it below. The sheath is also Kydex, and it's molded sheath, and it would normally have uh, blade tech, blade lock on it. Uh, I don't have one. Oh well. But it's a really nicely designed sheath as well, and it locks in there absolutely well. I mean, it's not going to fall out for nothing. It's a beautiful knife. If you're looking for a combat knife, this is the one you should have. If you are a serviceman, highly recommend this knife. This is the knife you should have. If it, for protecting your life, then get something that's designed for it. I'm Weapon Air, and I'll see you in the next video. Weapon Air here, and I'm going to do a knife review on a very special knife. And I gotta wait for the police to go by. <laughs> Next.